Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so welcome to the workshop from Red Hat uh, for this API DS interface in Singapore. So I wanted to talk about how to manage microservices as a mesh or APIs. Uh, now you must have uh, seen the topic from Mark Cheshire uh, in the keynote uh, earlier today. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, use, uh, uh, build a little bit more on that and uh, discuss this, uh, you know, in the context of uh, Red Hat 3 scale and also using Red Hat OpenShift service mesh. Okay, uh, let me uh, wait uh, about a minute to begin. Uh, it looks like we have uh, a few people also joining. Uh, so I will start in a minute. Okay, um, so let me begin. Good morning, every, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, so uh, today's topic uh, for this Red Hat workshop is how to manage your microservices as a mesh or APIs using Red Hat 3 scale. So my name is Satya Jayanti. I'm coming to you all the way from London, UK. Uh, I am a developer advocate for APIs and integration in Red Hat. Uh, I've been with Red Hat for close to seven years now uh, and specialize in uh, the Red Hat integration portfolio of products. Uh, so it's uh, nice to be here uh, and take you through uh, some of the uh, you know topics around microservices and uh, API management in the context of Red Hat and uh, how uh, it is relevant. Uh, so the way I have structured this talk is I have a bit of a presentation around 20 to 25 minutes where I will set the context about, uh, you know, how uh, we are uh, going to be managing APIs and how we are bringing in uh, microservices into the API ecosystem. And then later, uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, a couple of uh, demo scenarios uh, on both uh, API management as well as service mesh and then bringing it all together. Okay, so uh, just to set the context, uh, so if you are uh, familiar with API management, uh, you know, this is the typical uh, API management uh, uh, your uh, topology, right? So you have an API gateway that is going to act as your digital access point to your business. It is at the edge of your uh, enterprise, and uh, this is going to act as a gatekeeper for uh, all your uh, APIs uh, that you have, uh, you know, that you have uh, for within your uh, ecosystem. Okay, so uh, your clients are going to access your APIs uh, through the gateway itself. Okay, so this is uh, typically what is called the north-south uh, architectural pattern. And if we look at an example of that, so what we had, uh, earlier, uh, you know, uh, in um, most API management was, uh, you know, you had uh, a, a few uh, APIs that were being exposed by the, uh, by, uh, you know, by the applications, and uh, you could directly take the API backend and expose it uh, through, uh, you know, through the API management platform directly to the customer. So as you could see with my widget backend service, uh, on the left here, so I have, uh, you know, my backend service uh, uh, running inside my uh, organize my enterprise boundary, and then I could package it as an API product uh, called the widget product, and then I could have uh, my API consumers, in this case, my affiliates, uh, sign up and, uh, you know, use this. So uh, with my API product, what I get out of this is with a single backend, I had the ability to package it differently to different consumers, uh, have different application plans, have different sign-up plans, uh, provide them with uh, access to a developer portal, billing, 
pricing, uh, pricing rules, uh, rate limiting, and all those things. Right. With the growth of uh, you know a more uh, fine grained architecture with a uh, with a set of uh, uh, tens of uh, uh, tens of uh, API backends, uh, it, it didn't make sense for you to do a one to one relationship between your backend and your API product. So that's when you act, you have to package a boutique of uh, different API backends uh, into a single API product. And that's what you see here uh, on the right and in the middle with the internet and the shipping plans, uh, shipping API products, where these uh, products act as a facade to multiple API backends. You know? And it makes sense because you don't want to expose uh, your API backends directly to your uh, consumers uh, you know, uh, without first uh, trying to package it as a business uh, API, right? So this is what your API product is doing. And then you get all the functionality of, uh, you know, providing different plans and different uh, uh, rate limiting and pricing rules uh, as a boutique across uh, all of the different backends that you're managing, okay? So uh, as far as uh, managing APIs, which are uh, created, uh, uh, you know, as, uh, as services uh, using the standard uh, API design patterns is concerned, you know, uh, API and API as a product is, uh, you know, is what is the most popular North-South management, uh, you know, this architectural pattern that you would use. But in case uh, of where microservices are introduced, you introduce a little bit more complexity because now you're talking about, uh, you know, interaction, not just between, uh, you know, your external consumers trying to consume your APIs, but the API to API uh, communication happens even within your uh, enterprise boundary, within your cluster, between different domains. And so what happens is you would suddenly find yourself uh, being scaled to hundreds or thousands of uh, microservices because you know each microservice is uh, specific to a single uh, you know solves a single uh, uh, or single issue microservices right so then uh, the communication between these uh, uh, complex set of uh, microservices would require you to uh, provide uh, some sort of uh, mesh management within the microservice itself. So this is where you would have uh, an east-west uh, service architectural pattern needed to do uh, you know, distributed tracing and uh, mutual TLS between the different APIs, whitelisting and blacklisting of uh, IPs that could access the APIs, uh, traceability, providing observability and traceability across, uh, you know, the, the different APIs. So this is where uh, service mesh comes into the picture. And over the last few years, uh, there have been various uh, service mesh uh, products and service mesh uh, open source projects that's been released. And what you would find is, uh, you know, the capabilities that you have between API management, service mesh, also largely application integration are kind of uh, overlapping with each other, right? Uh, but what we need to remember is uh, that uh, try to target different audiences, right? For your API management is uh, mainly uh, you're going to think about uh, your APIs as an API provider, as uh, you know, the business usage of your APIs, exposing your APIs uh, for API consumers uh, who are going to be uh, outside your uh, enterprise boundary or uh, outside your uh, particular business domain and would need to access uh, not just the API endpoint itself, but largely concerned with, uh, you know, building an API business or an API ecosystem around it. Right. Whereas uh, a service mesh is more targeted towards your developers and DevOps uh, engineering. It is more uh, within the network itself, more within, uh, you know, a, a single cluster or uh, a single enterprise. Uh, and it tries to bring in uh, policies uh, like security, observability of uh, or tracing of a particular message across uh, your different microservices, bringing resiliency, chaos testing, etc. And uh, that is where 
it comes in the picture there is of course some overlap uh, where you introduce rate limits or security or policies uh, there is an overlap between what an api management can do and what a service mesh can do uh, but they apply at different levels so uh, as we go through uh, the example and the demo it will become clear to you uh, when uh, when you need to manage this in a service mesh and when in an api management Okay, so uh, the beauty of using three scale API management uh, is uh, actually that in, uh, whether you use a traditional architecture, uh, the one uh, with the north south uh, pattern that we talked about, you know, with uh, an API gateway and uh, providing access to your uh, uh, business APIs, or whether you use a microservice architecture uh, which is controlled through a service mesh like Istio, you could still have uh, the same API management. Uh, provide access to both sets of APIs, you know, whether you've uh, uh, developed it as a microservice or whether you've developed it as a traditional architecture. And it brings in the whole API management uh, ecosystem, like, you know, things like monetization, uh, providing a developer portal, providing analytics, providing security, authentications, authorizations, multiple uh, packaging of uh, APIs and things like that, okay? So that's what makes uh, using uh, three scale API management easy for you. You could uh, start at either end of the spectrum, start with uh, you know a set of uh, traditional APIs and API management platform and bring in a uh, service mesh and microservice architecture, or you're starting with a microservice architecture and you realize that you have built built up this whole uh, service mesh and now you need to bring in uh, you know a, a target and target APIs towards your uh, business consumers and towards your external uh, consumers and need to uh, plug in API manager. In either case, uh, three scale API management would be a right solution for you. So uh, a very simple uh, architecture architecture of the uh, API management platform itself. Uh, we have uh, uh, an API manager that is available for you uh, as a hosted SaaS solution or available for you to deploy on-premise or in the cloud platform of your choice running on top of OpenShift, uh, which provides you with uh, all of the API management capabilities, like uh, you know, creating your own custom developer portal, or uh, providing you with uh, as an API provider with an admin portal, uh, and all the functionality to manage uh, users and manage uh, your uh, APIs, uh, access analytics, setting up billing, etc. Right uh, now, this is sort of uh, the uh, control plane where you manage your uh, API, API capabilities. Uh, in your data plane is your policy enforcement point. So this is a, a very thin, uh, uh, very thin gateway that would uh, that would sit between your uh, API consumers and your uh, API backend and provide you with uh, the enforcement of the policies and the authorization uh, of the traffic going to your API backend. Okay. So with uh, three scale, you get uh, a choice of uh, multiple API gateways that you could use, uh, and we have uh, a, uh, we have a branded API gateway that we uh, ship with uh, three scale. We call it API Cast. It's available for you hosted if you're using our SaaS platform, or available for you uh, on OpenShift or as a Docker formatted container image that you could use or uh, there is a, an api available uh, that you could use uh, you know for directly for uh, uh, enforcing your policies uh, and also uh, and this is gets interesting and brings us uh, into more relevancy there is also an istio mixer adapter that plugs in directly into an istio service mesh and provides you with that api gateway capabilities without having to deploy uh, you know another layer of api gateway to manage the traffic so this will uh, uh, ensure that your api policies uh, that you create in three scale could be applied directly within the mesh itself Okay, so a little bit about the service mesh uh, ecosystem. Uh, so this is actually uh, the different uh, open source uh, projects uh, that go into the uh, 
uh, Red Hat OpenShift Service Mesh. Uh, so, uh, so it, at the heart of it is Istio. So Istio is uh, you know one of the most popular service mesh uh, uh, management uh, products uh, projects out there. Uh, so it is uh, an open source project and being widely used uh, by a lot of vendors. So it's it lies at the heart of the service mesh uh, from Red Hat, and uh, what Red Hat service mesh also brings you is uh, you know your uh, observability with uh, Prometheus and Grafana, uh, you know your uh, uh, connectivity and control uh, of uh, your uh, service mesh uh, rules and policies, uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, visibility by using uh, Kiali and uh, observability by using Jaeger. Okay, so uh, we will look at some of these uh, in our demo also. Uh, so you'll have a, a have a, a chance to see how uh, you know having just Istio is not enough. It, it, even though it is the heart of the service mesh itself, you know you need that uh, set of other projects around you to bring you all of the other capabilities that you need in a service mesh. Okay, so. Uh, a, a very brief overview about how a service mesh architecture is and uh, how it works uh, is uh, you know you have a split uh, first of all between the data plane and the control plane right uh, so at the control plane is where you have uh, uh, what are called uh, uh, different uh, components like a mixer a galley a pilot a citadel which all uh, have different functionality right so they provide you with an ability to uh, uh, to provide security provide uh, configuration of uh, data to the proxies provide configuration uh, and uh, you know provide different uh, uh, different levels of uh, uh, different levels of policy checks that you could bring in and uh, you know and uh, and this is all configured in the uh, in the control plane itself and in the data plane uh, is uh, is an envoy uh, so this is a, a lightweight sidecar that is deployed with each microservice that you have deployed uh, in your cluster and what this would do is uh, at runtime at your uh, in your data plane it acts as a smart reverse proxy a very lightweight reverse proxy to uh, you know, to both apply the policies and to uh, and to uh, interact with your uh, uh, control plane okay so when we bring in api management and service mesh together so the main idea is to separate the concerns right so if your idea is to have uh, a, uh, like i said a more network layer intelligence right so if you are bringing in things like uh, distributed tracing across your microservices you know setting up uh, security at the network level like mutual tls setting up traffic routing rules setting up uh, whitelisting and blacklisting of ip rules uh, you know things like that the uh, you know chaos uh, uh, testing um, those are the kind of uh, uh, things where you would use a service mesh whereas if you are thinking about uh, you know the consumer and producer relationships between the different apis that you are exposing uh, you know the, uh, policy enforcement as an AP, at an api level rather than at a individual microservice level providing access to a API portal, uh, thinking about uh, onboarding developers or consumers, you know, providing you analytics at the API product level, then you need to go for uh, an API management platform. So what we um, what we want to uh, highlight is both are complementary, uh, you know, technologies, and you would frequently need both to have a, a successful API management strategy. Okay, so again, with Red Hat's approach to APIs on Kubernetes, so Red Hat has the most popular uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, Kubernetes runtime, which is uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, and uh, with uh, the uh, Red Hat integration, and Istio, and also with the uh, K-native and serverless technologies running on top of OpenShift, so OpenShift becomes uh, you know the standard container platform on which uh, everything can run. And then, uh, 
uh, you know, with uh, Red Hat integration and with Rescale itself uh, having that uh, 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 that uh, API management uh, available uh, to deploy on OpenShift and the Istio mixer adapter and the API gateways that could be deployed on OpenShift, it gives you with uh, an ability to uh, to then uh, have a single ecosystem for all of your uh, APIs, and uh, it uh, enables you to uh, provide a discovery of the services running on uh, your uh, Kubernetes platform importing APIs or uh, using uh, operators uh, to, uh, to manage your uh, API life cycles, uh, ability to fully automate uh, CI CD pipelines using API as a code approach instead of you know trying to bother with setting up a lot of uh, configurations using the user interface. Uh, you know, and at the same time, providing you with, uh, you know, the developer portal and uh, the policies and analytics that you would need. Okay. So with that said, uh, let me, uh, let me take you through the demo. Okay. So if you see uh, my plan here, uh, what I wanted to do was actually uh, three things here. I want to achieve three different uh, uh, three different scenarios in this demo. So the first one is to show you how a simple API packaging is done. Right. So in here, what I want to show is, you know, you have a single backend, and uh, you know, exposing it as a single API. Uh, what you need to do in three scale to achieve that. Okay, then we will look at, uh, you know, that boutique of uh, API. So we will look at how you package uh, an API as a product when you have multiple backends and how uh, you could uh, uh, direct traffic to the different backends, how your analytics changes, uh, you know, when you have multiple backends and multiple paths. Right. And finally, I, I want to bring in uh, microservices and show you uh, how uh, when you have a microservice uh, uh, system and you have a, a deployed microservices based application managed through Istio, how easy it is to bring in three scale and uh, bring in API management capabilities directly to it. Okay. So first of all, uh, all of this, uh, uh, all all of my uh, uh, all of my examples are running on top of uh, an OpenShift 4.4, uh, and uh, all, I'm also using my uh, uh, SaaS uh, application that is running on uh, threescale.net. So this is our hosted uh, platform, and uh, you could actually go and uh, sign up. Uh, so the link would be in the Red Hat booth, and you could sign up. And if you want to play around with uh, Red Hat Threescale, uh, you could sign up and create an account, and uh, you could play around with some of the functionalities. Okay, so if you come here and you log in uh, to the Threescale, uh, what you see is a dashboard. And on the dashboard, you get, uh, you know, at a glance, you would see what all the APIs you have deployed, what are the backends you're managing, uh, you know, what audience you have. And if you have any uh, specific messages about what happened today, uh, you know, any particular events uh, that, uh, that you need your attention as an admin, you could see it here. Okay, so if I walk into my API itself and I show you my inventory product API. So this is an API that I created uh, with a single backend in mind. Okay, so if I show you my backends, so this is connected to my inventory backend, right? So this is connected to a single private base URL that of uh, a particular uh, API backend that is running. And I want to expose this as an uh, API product uh, to my consumers, okay? So when I want to do that, I set up, uh, you know, my, uh, my configuration so I could go into my settings and I could choose which particular gateway I want to use. So I'm here using the three scale managed gateway, the hosted gateway that we talked about. I could set up my authentication credentials. And here, again, uh, the ability to easily plug in OpenID Connect uh, and bring in uh, the single sign-on is really useful for people to use. Uh, and uh, you could set up uh, the credentials and the response codes and everything. 
Uh, another interesting aspect is uh, you remember where I talked about having these uh, uh, different packaging for different consumers. So in this case, uh, I have set up uh, two different plans. There is a basic plan that I'm using, which is uh, uh, maybe going to be used for you know my base level consumers. Maybe I want to give this as a free plan for my consumers, and uh, you know because it's a free plan, I could probably just uh, set up a, a usage limit of uh, you know maybe they can make like two calls a minute or something and and so with this uh, kind of plan or what i would know is that there is no pricing involved because it's free but then they are limited to how many calls they can make okay and so uh, i could do that and uh, and similarly you would see that i have uh, another plan a premium plan Okay, and in my premium plan, uh, I have uh, uh, also provided uh, no limits. Uh, maybe there will be pricing rules uh, that I would set up here, you know, at fixed cost per month uh, with which I could, uh, you know, upgrade to a premium plan. And what I would also have here is a set of features, you know, for premium users, you know, maybe 24-7 uh, support or, uh, you know, because they're premium users, they could uh, get access to certain sections of my developer portal that they could access and things like that okay now uh, you know now that these uh, these are set up uh, what i could do is uh, you know my api is exposed so if you see here with my configuration there is uh, there are uh, basically three skill provides you with uh, two different gateways there is a staging gateway wherein when i'm setting up my policies and my you know my mapping rules and my backends i want to test out you know whether uh, it's working uh, the rules and the endpoints are working correctly so i have a staging and uh, gateway that runs uh, where all these uh, configurations uh, are first tested before i could promote this into a production endpoint and this production endpoint is what will be used by your end consumers to actually connect to your uh, services okay so now if i take this and uh, if i look at my inventory endpoint uh, okay and uh, if i show you that in order to make a call because i have set up uh, that i need an api key or a user key that is needed uh, i need to provide it with the user key and so where do i get this user key i have my audiences here and then uh, within uh, that audience I, I would know that you know they would have uh, certain applications that they have access to so in that particular uh, user's applications, uh, so they have, they're signed up to the inventory service with the inventory basic plan. And, uh, and here the user uh, could go and access their credentials, right? For, uh, so this is where uh, I would go in and uh, if I plug in the same user key and I send a request, I should be able to get a response back right uh, so that's how uh, you could see that uh, you know that all of this uh, functionality from the from the user access to the back end and all the policies and application plans that we applied everything is working correctly and so you remember where we set up uh, you know a rate limit of 2 uh, uh, 2 hits per minute so when the user tries to access uh, the same api a third time you get a user's limit exceeded okay and uh, for the user perspective, actually, so I, I will uh, dig into this uh, a little bit later, but from the user perspective, you could actually go in and uh, uh, access uh, the access uh, the your APIs through the developer portal okay so the same functionality that you have seen as an administrator uh, right what are the applications i have what are the uh, user keys that i have can i regenerate my key can i look at my usage and documentation the users will do all that through their uh, custom uh, developer portal that we have provided for them so for your uh, end users to access uh, their apis and their applications and the plans uh, that they uh, that they have access to they would do that through this custom developer portal that you created okay 
and now what we can do is uh, if we go if i go back to the inventory product and uh, show you quickly the traffic you would see that uh, you know in the last 24 hours uh, you would see quickly what uh, what traffic uh, uh, hits have come in uh, if there were any integration errors uh, that happened maybe some user used an invalid user key or something you could do that uh, you could look at the different top applications uh, you know that are accessing uh, your uh, api so you need to understand which apis are being used uh, which applications are the top application so if you want to maybe reach out to them directly or provide a different pricing plan you have all the analytics information here to enable you to do that right so this makes it clear how we do that when we are using a single api backend and exposing it directly to uh, users right so the challenge happens when we have multiple api backends and I want to package them all in the same way, right? So if I, for example, instead of just having an inventory, I have a, a, a store front, right? And my storefront needs to access to four different APIs that I have. You know, there may be a catalog backend, there may be an inventory backend, there may be a ratings backend, and there may be a review backend, right? So this is a typical, uh, you know, bookstore or a cool store application, which uh, where the functionality is implemented through multiple backend services, and you may have, uh, you know, a single, uh, a single uh, API with which you are giving access to your uh, uh, consumers to implement uh, the functionality onto their single page applications or onto their uh, storefronts okay so if i have this uh, sort of a scenario uh, i would instead of giving them uh, you know creating them multiple uh, apis for which they need to subscribe and sign up and manage multiple keys and multiple plans i can package them all into a single api product and provide uh, multiple paths with which they could interact with the same uh, API. So it's for them, it is just like a, a single API request and a single API endpoint. So just with the different paths, they will be able to access the different endpoints. OK, so what when I set up uh, uh, my configuration, uh, again, uh, for my staging and production, there will be a single endpoint for them to call, whether they are accessing inventory, whether they are accessing catalog, ratings, or review. OK, and what I do here is I have my mapping rules for the different uh, path patterns that I have. And uh, you know that is going to direct them to the appropriate uh, backend uh, service correctly. Okay, so if I do that, uh, what you will notice is, uh, uh, you know, uh, my application plans. Again, I have a cool store basic plan and a cool store premium plan. Okay, so in my basic plan, again, I may have certain rate limits that are set up maybe certain pricing rules that are set up. I'm going to now charge you, you know, USD 0.02 cents uh, for uh, uh, per call, you know, and so that, so that pricing and metering rules happen for each call, okay? I could also set it up such that, you know, I would uh, provide them with uh, no access to my inventory you know for basic users maybe i don't want to give them access to my inventory you know hey if you want to know how many uh, how many of a particular product i have you have to subscribe to a premium plan otherwise you know you could only uh, get the catalog items and look at the reviews and ratings but not my existing inventory okay so if i do that and i try to make a request uh, to the inventory endpoint Okay, uh, sorry, this is the product cool store. Yes. So cool store at the limit. Yeah, so so so, I, so what it says is it's authentication failed because uh, you are now not allowed to access that particular inventory. Okay, and now if I make them enable it takes about five seconds for the uh, for it to be updated into my staging gateway it, it happens automatically uh, but it takes a few seconds for the configuration to be updated and so when the configuration is updated uh, you should now be able to see 
the response back okay and then uh, because i have rate limit set up the you know for two uh, require two hits per minute you know if they try to try to do more there's a usage limit extent exit okay and similar to how we saw with my uh, single api backend if i look at my uh, hits now uh, for uh, for my different apis that i have running you would now see that you know i have uh, uh, i have uh, both uh, the number of hits shown uh, all together for my different backends and i also have an ability to uh, see the hits to the different paths and different backend end so at a glance i could see yes i'm i you know which is my most popular backend so then i can take a call hey maybe you know inventory is being used more so i should set up special pricing rules for the inventory or you know maybe my catalog uh, is the most requested item so i could uh, maybe set up a fixed cost for my catalog and so i could look at my traffic uh, look at my different applications that are running and then uh, take action on which are the billing plans or which are the plans that i could set up more appropriately for my consumers okay so that's uh, how it works uh, on the api itself right now i'm going to uh, change tracks a little bit and move towards uh, the service mesh itself okay so here i have deployed my service mesh uh, in uh, openshift and uh, if you look at my service mesh that is deployed here I have uh, an OpenShift service mesh and uh, this control plane uh, actually uh, tells me what are uh, at a glance, what is the control plane that I have deployed, right? So I could have uh, uh, multiple different uh, components that I could plug in. Uh, so as you could see, I could set up security for the control plane. I have set up Kiali to be able to do that, uh, you know, uh, traceability and uh, control of the uh, of the microservice uh, platform, microservice uh, uh, network itself. I could uh, provide Grafana to view the logs and the reports directly. Jager to do that uh, observability uh, and tracing across uh, the different microservices, and. Here is where it comes in, right? Three scale adapter is also a plugin onto Istio itself uh, on OpenShift, which means that you know if I want to uh, provide API management access at a later point, all I need to do is enable this here, and now uh, you know that particular mixer for three scale is also enabled in my Istio. I could directly, uh, uh, you know, it's already plugged in, and now. Uh, the th the three scale gateway is uh, available for you to use within your service mesh itself. Okay, so I have a simple application, what I call a book info application. So this is uh, consisting of these four different uh, microservices. So there is a product page which is your ingress point, and then from the product page it uh, it accesses uh, different. Um, uh, services like a details, uh, a reviews, and a ratings. Okay, uh, so this uh, here at a glance in Kiali, you can look at the relationship between your different services, which service is uh, uh, calling which service. You could look at uh, you know that the different uh, rules uh, that you have set up uh, for each of these services. You know, so you could look at the service itself. I could go into the service itself. I could look at the traffic. Uh, uh, for for each service, uh, you know, and I could uh, look at uh, what are the workloads, which is the uh, which is the actual deployment uh, that is running uh, this particular service. Okay, and then if I go to my tracing uh, in Jaeger, I could actually see that you know there is this uh, uh, tracing uh, that happens where I could go in and it would show me what are the different uh, microservices that are being called, uh, how much time uh, is there. If there are any errors in each of these uh, microservices, I could see at a glance where things fail, and I could dig into it, uh, and it would combine the logs for each of them. Right. So it just makes it easier for you to visualize that. Now, if I try to make a request uh, 
to this uh, particular uh, Istio ingress endpoint. So at this point, I don't have uh, my uh, three scale uh, integrated into it, which means that you know there is no API key security that is involved at this point. So if I just send a request directly without any sort of API keys directly to the ingress gateway that is provided by Istio, I get a response back, okay? And if you see here, if I go back to Jaeger and uh, I try to find traces, I get two new traces of the two requests that we just made, okay? And we could look at the total time uh, in milliseconds that it took to service that particular request, okay? Now we will look at how I would uh, add, uh, uh, add that particular uh, configuration. So if, uh, if you can uh, look here, to my particular, uh, uh, I need to put a patch to my uh, uh, my running book info deployment, right? So this patch consists of uh, the providing that service mesh uh, in uh, three scale service, so that it tells you that you know in the service mesh I'm now going to use three scale also, okay? And this is the service that I have correspondingly in my three scale and my three scale credentials are going to be managed by this particular custom resource that I'm creating. Okay, so if I now go to my uh, three scale, now my three scale is also running in the same uh, cluster, but I could have as well run it on my hosted, uh, the concept remains the same. Okay, so now if you see my cool store, uh, I don't need to do the my API as a product, right? Because I now plugged in directly to a microservice architecture, which is taking care of all of that for me. All I care about now is uh, those specific uh, services uh, as APIs that I need to expose. So in my integration, instead of the actual API backend endpoints and the URLs and fiddling with, uh, you know, with all those concepts, I could just say I'm plugging into Istio which means that you know the Istio adapter is available and it is going to provide, him, provide me with that uh, endpoint. Uh, all I need to do is the gateway will be making a call with that particular, for this particular service for a particular rate limit and authentication and we are going to use it, right? Everything else remains the same. I could still package that application using my basic plan, uh, you know, using my rate limits that I specify here, my pricing rules that I specify here, all of those things that I could do with my APIs, I could do with my microservices as well. Okay, so if I now enable uh, the uh, patching of my application itself uh, to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, it is able to, uh, actually uh, uh, patch that particular uh, runtime uh, running deployment. So I just need to wait for a few seconds for the deployment to be successful. And then once that happens, when I uh, try to access it uh, without providing uh, a user key, uh, it should fail now. Yeah, so if you see here, it fails because now three scale is in the system and it says, unless you provide an authentication, it's not going to accept it, right? So now if I provide the right user key and the credentials, I get the response back, okay? So that, so that way I have ensured that, you know, it is using the same Istio ingress gateway, making the same call to the same endpoint using the same microservice mesh, but I have plugged in API management and uh, I am able to uh, access using that, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, and uh, let me make a few more calls uh, just so we could make it uh, easier for you to visualize it in Jaeger. Uh, and uh, what you can see here is, let's go back to Jaeger and try to find traces again. So there are a few more traces. And now within these traces, what you can see is not just that uh, you know that the different microservices that already exist but the three scale uh, authorization itself that is happening 
okay and three scale actually provides you with an ability to cache uh, these uh, particular user keys and cache the authorizations uh, uh, you know you have a time to live and it would uh, have an ability for it to renew the keys automatically uh, without uh, impacting on actual hits uh, coming in uh, so that it would reduce the overhead that it takes for uh, for you to introduce api management into your microservice architecture so it just makes makes it uh, so easy for you both to plug in the three scale uh, uh, three scale uh, into your uh, existing istio mesh but also provide the rate limiting capabilities and everything else and at the same time now that you have your uh, apis uh, defined in three scale itself now uh, you know for your users it just makes it so much easier that the users don't need to know that you know you have a service mesh and there is this complex set of uh, rules that need to be defined in yaml and you know the control plane and you know the network level uh, uh, you know network level security they don't need to bother with your external consumers they will interact with this uh, microservice just like they interact with any other api and if they visit the portal here, they will just be able to see your plan and just sign up to it as they did before. Okay. So yeah, so that's the uh, that's the demo and presentation that I wanted to do. Let me uh, stop here and let's see if there are any questions. Let me stop sharing my screen now. So it's uh, I know it's a uh, screen within a screen is going to be a bit uh, confusing. Okay, uh, I think uh, while while Leon, thank you so much. Uh, you've been answering questions here. Anything uh, that I missed? Uh, any question? Okay, yeah, so I think the screen uh, and the slides, right? Yeah, I think we had this issue when I did this particular workshop and demo earlier also for API Days Interface San Francisco, uh, but you do get access to the recordings uh, after uh, the event itself, uh, you know, so if you want to review it, uh, you can do that. Or like Valyong said, you know, we are free to share uh, the complete slide deck with you, uh, if you if you want to review that, okay? Any any other questions? Yeah, thank you, Savik. I hope you found it useful. Okay, we have a couple of minutes if you have any questions. I think we have the session until 50 past the hour. Okay, just uh, scrolling up to see if I have any uh, anything that I have missed.
Yes, so there is a free trial. You have uh, a limit of, uh, you know, the number of uh, services you can run and the traffic, obviously. But yes, you can try out most of the functionality with the, uh, with the, you know, free developer access there. Yeah, so I think that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you very much. I know this is the last session on the second day. Uh, so thank you very much for all of you for attending. And, uh, you know, I hope you found this useful. And I would encourage you to uh, to uh, think of uh, Red Hat 3 Scale and Red Hat OpenShift and Service Mesh when you're uh, thinking about your next uh, microservices or next API implementation architecture. Thank you very much, everyone, and I hope to see you all in uh, in uh, a future session. Okay, thank you.